From school DJ to the 21-year-old whose dance hit in the beginning made him an international name, Rogers House tells his story. Hard graft as a voice artist and DJ has sustained him through his rise to one of the best radio gigs in the land. Welcome to the dungeon. Being in here, I'm already seeing so many facets of your personality. I think being a radio DJ, you spend a lot of time you know, in a, especially when you've, like I have done in the past, you, you host a show on your own, mm. you, you're in a room, you're isolated, you're talking on a mic, sometimes you can't help but feel like you're talking to yourself and you start going a little insane. And I think it's very handy to have some, uh, some imaginary friends sometimes, even if they're a little, uh, little wacky. We got, who we got here? We got Peter Griffin. Hey Brian, hey Brian, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you got Stuart Griffin. Go away fat man. You know, all sorts of things. These are all like cool guys from like my childhood. We got a uh, uh, top billing. Watch it, you must. Excellent. Hot cheers. <laughs> <laughs> this looks very complicated. What happens here? Hmm. Well, at the moment, I'm working on a little, a little tune. Sometimes, like some radio shows, you like to have different music underneath. They call it bed music, so you wanted to create an atmosphere or a mood maybe. And I like to sometimes try and make a track from nothing, so it just gives that show that extra kind of like spice, originality, and you, you get to hear a bit of my personality. All are welcome to join his party. This is the best of the good life with Roger Good on 5FM. Woo! <laughs> Beautiful. You better make me sound sexy. When I'm done with you, you're not even going to recognize your own voice. It's going to freak you out, which is... Just about that and check it This is the best of the good life with Roger Good on Five of Woo! <laughs> I'm loving that whole woo! Oh, we got nothing on you, sister. Uh huh. Thing. Now, this is very high tech again. I know if you want to be a DJ, you definitely don't start here, do you? Now, I get asked a lot by like parents, young guys come up to me, they're like, how do I start learning how to beat mix or something? The best way to learn is to learn on an old pair of turntables. It's almost like two racehorses yeah. that are running down a track and the one's going slightly faster than the other one and you've got to kind of like whack your horse yeah. and get him to catch up and the trick is to get them to run both at the same speed and then you, you leave them as they are and they should just run seamlessly. Wow. Roger often visits his grandmother Doreen and his uncle Mike in Fishhook, Cape Town where he grew up, taught himself piano and drew on a wealth of artistic influences from his family. So I grew up spending a lot of time with Mike this is what his greatest hobby, I think, is building models for movies and stuff. We were also like heavily involved in computers. The first time I ever saw a computer, where, which had a sound card, that ran a program called Dr. Spato. Do you remember that? Yeah. I mean, I sat down there, I was like 12 years old or something, and I typed in some words into this keyboard, and the thing started speaking to me. I was like, oh my gosh. This computer can make sound effects, you know. Imagine that you could take us to the next limit. So I think that kind of evolved into music production, which then evolved into me becoming a radio public like monkey. Yeah, you were damn good. I remember you did PC support and uh, when you were like how old? 14 years old? Computer geeks. We were the originals. His grandfather, Alan, painted, wrote stories, made home movies, and Doreen sang on stage. Today, it's the press singing her grandson's praises, leaving her free to tease him and keep him humble. So what we're going to attempt to do now is make some tea. Now, many of you watching at home might be thinking, hmm, that sounds awfully simple. Not as easy as you think when you've got Granny Good in the kitchen. Now, what? you can understand there the whole afternoon and and not make the tea because I've been with you shopping once and you lost your list when you're halfway around the shops. Okay, let's get busy. <laughs> now hurry up. <laughs> that apron doesn't suit you. I might just point out to you, I found this in your cupboard. I think it's rather trendy. This has got 1950s vintage written all over it. Well, it doesn't suit you, so you better take it off. You look terrible okay. with it on. The audience that listens to the radio station I work for, for five, obviously it's young, cool, fun, they're very easy to like, you can play with them a lot, you know, and they want to be played with. So we put you on the show the one night and like... That was I mean, when I was in the show. Was yeah, it? yeah, we were in the studio, yeah, and the phone lines lit up like a Christmas tree. And the kinds of these, like, we had these really interesting, like, young, cool, like, girls were calling in, and then I suddenly twigged that that market... They all have a grandmother or a grandfather, so I think that's kind of how they, they're related to it. And then what really started getting out of control was, you know, Hello. we started feeding Granny, like, all these bizarre links to artists, like Kanye West and Jay-Z. She's like, yo, pop some Jay-Z on that playlist, yo. Roger, good. Doris. Hello. 
It's me, it's Roger. I'm Roger. Listen, you're on the radio now. You've got to announce the next song. You've got to announce it. You're going to be the DJ. You're going to help me do the show, okay? Well, I hope I know what it is. It's Kanye West. What is it? Come your way. Just tell him the next record on 5FM is Kick Ass. Kicker. <laughs> After a decade with 5FM, Roger's move to their drive time slot now sees him working with a team of seven, with producer Elma Smith playing mom. The energy in that studio is electrifying. What a great bunch of people. Yes, we have so much fun. I mean, I'm sure you could see with Roger that it's just chaos in there, but I try to, as a producer, get things together a bit and make sure that there's some kind of structure and semblance of control. But it's a bit like herding cats and you, you're never really going to control all of it, so you just have to run with it and have as much fun as you can. It's great when we have guests in because people really feed on that energy and yeah. the listeners are loving it and people are calling in. It's basically like growing a little family. What's the new group dynamic? This is the first time all of you are working together. It's a new team. I think we're all completely different. We bring something different to the team. Tando, she's hilarious because you never know what's going to come out of her mouth. Yeah, it's very, like, absolutely insane. I mean, we have Vic. He says very inappropriate things, I promise. Then there's CS. He's the more straight guy. You know, he doesn't say anything out of line. Very funny as well. And Roger Good, we go way back to 1969, I think it is, in Vietnam when he was in a dark place. I found him in a trench. She said, CS, should I do this radio thing or not? And I said, Roger, you better. You better do this. We need you for this. So uh, Roger's uh, a great guy, and I think he's exactly the type of guy you need to drive you home in the afternoons. The energy's great. Sit back, relax. Sometimes you might need to fasten your seatbelt. I can't be held accountable for anything that goes on on this show. Really, I mean, I'm surrounded by maniacs. We're a wolf pack. We're military. We take them down. No prisoners. Ask CS. Give me a hoo-ha, wolf pack. Hoo-ha! Hoo-ha, not hoo-ha. Wolves do wolves. 